Hi, welcome to Virtually Together. I'm Janelle Riley. Uh, today's guest is really special. One of the best new shows of the season was Zoe's Extraordinary Playlist, and so much credit is due to the casting of this musical dramedy. Uh, today we are joined by John Clarence Stewart, who plays Simon, Zoe's co-worker and potential love interest. Uh, you might recognize John from such Netflix shows as Luke Cage and What If, uh, but this is a really great role as Simon. He he gets to sing, dance, and utilize some uh, really natural charisma, which uh, you'll see is on display. So let's get right to it. Please welcome John Claret Stewart. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for that beautiful uh, season finale of Zoe's Extraordinary Playlist. Oh my God, um, I know you're on the show, but are you a fan of the show too? What, what did you think when you read that script? <laughs> when I read the, the, the script for the finale, um, I wept. And when we did our table read, because we did a table read of every episode, um, I've never experienced that kind of feeling after reading, uh, after doing a table read. Like the entire, there was not a dry eye in the entire room. And everyone knew it was something special, you know? And then it was, then there was just, how do we do everything that we can to make sure that we do this justice? And, uh, you know, thanks to John and Austin and Mandy, we were all able to get it done. And when I watched it, because this is my first time seeing the finale, when I watched the finale, I was, a, I was a, a wreck in the best way. Like, I love the show that we're working on, that I have had the opportunity to work on. And I think it's kind of this balm that we need right now. It's this very unique and specific tone of show that strikes, you know, joy and joy and pain in this really delicate balance and it allows people to release what they need to it allows them some levity when they need um yeah i think it's pretty special i love that you use the word balm because i heard several people use that exact word after they saw it and um i was tweeting about it actually as, as it was happening and i just put on a mud mask which was a huge mistake because i started crying <laughs> and then the Start sliding off, and it was, I was like that was a huge mistake, and, and <laughs> Peter Gallagher for uh, for messing things up for me. <laughs> you get it. So you tweet him and say, "Hey, you owe me a you owe me a mud mask." Just <laughs> you know, I did tweet to to say um, that two of his finest roles, and I meant this as a compliment, no shade. Two of his finest roles have been largely nonverbal. And while you were sleeping, he's in a coma, mm. and you know, it takes it takes a special actor. To like make the audience fall in love with them, even when their character is not active. Absolutely, I, I mean, you articulated that so flipping well. Like he's he has a presence about him, and you can feel it when you meet him. You can feel it when you're working with him, and you can feel it through the screen. It's like it's this indelible thing that he has, and it makes anyone like fall in love, like fall in love with him. Um, he is this charisma that doesn't need words, you know? And that's phenomenal. It's really special. I mean, your whole cast is amazing. It's like all my favorite people. Mary Steenburgen's in it. I've been a huge fan of Jane since uh, Suburbia. Um, and she's your primary scene partner. What's she like to work with? She's phenomenal. I mean, Jane is a blast. She's, she is beyond talented. She's beyond talented. And match that with an, an, an insane work ethic and match that with this like open and willing heart. You know, she led us, you know, we, we, we took our cues from her and she kept the spirits of everyone up. I mean, she had the most daunting task that I'd, I've ever seen any actor undertake. Um, mm. And specifically when we saw her uh, in episode 108, where she, she did every single musical number and then she had to rehearse all of them and execute all of them. And she did so in such a, it, it was pretty mind blowing to watch it happen. And um, so I, I have the utmost admiration and respect for Jane. And also she's the reason that I was even in the show. Like we worked on What If together with Netflix and we were all hanging out. <laughs> and she mentioned this show in, um, in a conversation we were having with some castmates. And it came out that I sing and she sent my information to Austin, my name. and. Then I got the call about the show and I got the script pilot and I read it and I fell in love with it. And so I'm indebted to Jane in a huge way to be 
a part of this process. I can't believe I didn't put that together sooner because of course, um, I always think of What If as the Renee Zellweger show because Jane's character was so different than anything I've seen her play before. But mm-hmm. yeah, that was her. So that makes perfect sense. That's really, yeah. that's a great story. <laughs> I mean, it's just, it's just the truth, you know? I mean, you can't, I mean, you can't make this stuff up. And I think that when it comes to Zoe specifically, there's been this kind of, this sense of kismet around the entire process. Everyone that's been a part of it has felt it. I mean, people come in, um, people who are guest stars have come in and they feel it, you know? And everyone, there's just this sense that we were working on something that was special. And it starts with Austin, who penned it, um, and where it came from, which is his relationship with his father. And there's this authenticity and this vulnerability and his love for musicals that just like streams all throughout through it, which is amazing. Did you guys shoot a pilot first before getting we did. I, I'm really curious about this process because on the page, you know, I, I don't know that this show should work. <laughs> 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 And it's such a it's such a miracle when anything works so beautifully, but but it really works. <laughs> yes, you know it's interesting because that's that I the, again with the pilot specifically because there was a tone that had to be established with the pilot, um, a tone that made everyone go, "Oh, this is the world we're in," and that's Austin, Richard Shepard, and Mandy Moore. Like they were. Richard directed the pilot, Austin, of course, penned it, and Mandy, it's a choreographer extraordinaire. And there are these specific ways that they chose to move in and out of song, the ways that the rules they set up in the pilot, which led us throughout the entire season, um, were pretty, I mean, pretty magical. Like the way that they orchestrated it. And in other, in other people's hands, I don't know that it would have worked. You know, I think that, that we all had the right people there. Um, and Austin specifically had this, I, I remember when I went into, uh, when I went in for the audition and I thought, hey, I'm not, you know, I haven't been on Broadway. You know, that's not my story. You know, and there's a lot of things that I don't do, but there are things that I do. And I went into the audition, I was just like, I'm gonna show up and be my best self. And Austin really wanted to capture the joy and the levity and the bliss of musical theater, um, but also the gravitas and the pain and the vulnerability that can be hit through song. And we had to ride that line. And he was, uh, he, he was insatiable in his way to try to find and ride that line, you know? And um, I think we're all better for it, honestly. And honestly, I think Simon has one of the greatest character introductions I've ever seen on television. I mean, we get to <laughs> see you sitting there singing Mad World. It's absolutely haunting. It tells you so much about the character. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. For sure. I mean, when I, when I read the pilot and I saw that that was happening, I was like, oh, shit, I got to do this. I have to do this. I have to do this. I have to go in. And um, when we shot the pilot, we did two versions of the song. We executed a version of the song that was very heavy contemporary dance. And then we executed the version that we used, which was uh, more stationary and more sung. And um, it was, I don't know, it was just this uh, really, this really special thing for me. It was a really special thing to be a part of that, to be able to sing that song. And um, also to, to embody this character who's experiencing something that I know very closely, this idea of uh, loss and grief and um, having lost my father a while back, this, this idea of what's happening behind the mask, you know, and um, music being, for me, a balm and a conduit to healing and connection with other people. Um, a way to uh, a way to express things that sometimes words don't, you know. And um, yeah, I think. And when Austin and I, when we met the first time, we had this thirty-minute conversation before I even went in to do the final test, and we had this. It, it was bliss. It was just a really beautiful moment. Um, yeah. So I'm glad to hear that that moment landed on you that way. Like oh yeah, I find myself singing it a lot, and I'm not a singer, so nobody wants to hear that. But it's 
funny how that specific version is caught in my mind. Are you guys releasing an album, actually? I don't know. I mean, we have, there's a playlist up on Spotify and iTunes, um, a playlist of all the songs that we've sung in the show. And um, so those are accessible. I, I hope that we come out with an album. I think that'd be really phenomenal um, just because some of the covers, well, all of the covers are really amazing. And there are some that just really, it just, Harvey Mason Jr., our producer, just works some serious magic, yo. Uh, do you have a healthy competition with uh, Skylar Aston? You know, because uh, I'm very Team Simon, but he's uh -huh. a compelling face for his character. He's a very good actor, but you know, I'm I'm really dying for season two to uh, see how this plays out. Well, I mean, I, I'm dying to see as well. I don't know what's going to happen, and I'm excited about that. I think that um, they're the only competition in the show that that I have found. Um, is the one of this, this, this evolution of, it's like this evolution of each of these individuals. And sometimes the beautiful thing about this triangle is that there are no villains and that everybody is on their journey and sometimes they get closer to one another at a moment and then they have a realization or a revelation like as we do in life and it pulls us apart from one another. So you never quite know where the dance is gonna lead you. And I think that right when you right when you assume you know what's going to happen, we have you right where we want you yeah. because then we can pull the rug out from under you. So like, that's what I've found in this season. Um, and uh, and I, I find a lot of joy in this, this idea of um, kind of breaking down these archetypes of these men, these men vying for a woman and her, her honor, or like this, this idea of like going, getting the princess in the tower or something like that. I, I just, you know, we, none of us were interested in that. And um, the, the fact that they're, they've written a character, Zoe, that has so much autonomy and power and choice. And it's really what she wants and whatever she wants to do. And that's it. That's what it is. And these other men, these men are, are deciding and figuring out what they want and how they want to move forward in their lives. And then the question is, you know, do, do their wants line up or do they not? And, and so it's, it's really pure to me in that way. And, and I'm grateful for that. It's nice to see a show too where people are vulnerable, especially men, especially strong men, you know, which is mm. something I don't think we get to see much of. I agree, I agree. We, um, that's something that we all share as a, as a value, um, this, this idea of moving with an open heart and being vulnerable and being authentic. And um, we, I mean, I love that. And so that was another reason why I wanted to be a part of it. Um, it's, it is a rare thing to see men so frequently have the opportunity through the device of the show to express what is going on in their hearts without filter. And, you know, for better or for worse sometimes, um, but to get past what they want you to think and actually to what they really feel. Um, and, I, and, and I think that that was another gift in this show. Because we, I think a lot of times we need permission, you know? A lot of us, we, we've, I watch, content and in my life when i've watched content that's really struck a chord with me it's because i've seen people that i recognize and they're doing something that i haven't yet done doing something that i wanted to do and they give me permission to do so and i think that in the show austin has pinned that which is great and uh to that end i'm kind of asking people during this weird quarantine lockdown time uh what's the entertainment that's keeping you occupied like um Anything you're reading or uh, shows you're binging? I just binged What If actually fairly recently, so <laughs> that's a good one. Yeah, that's great. That's that's that's, that's dope. That's dope. Um, I am. I okay. So there's a there's a book called Friday Black that I recently read. Um, it's a wonderful book, um, and it's like Black Mirror but racial justice type things, and it's really? it's phenomenal. Yeah, oh, it's yeah, phenomenal. Yeah. I read about this. Yes, several people recommended it to me. Yeah. Yes. So but if I heard it, it might be hard. 
Absolutely. Absolutely. Life is hard. Yeah. 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 It's very, it's honest, you know, yeah. um, and kind of takes, takes given circumstances and like, like mirror, like pushes it forward just a little bit to where it's believable and um, stretches the heart and the mind in a, in a good way. Um, so that was wonderful. I just watched this show called Money Heist on Netflix. Um, it's a show that's shot, it's a Spanish show. Um, it's on Netflix and uh, it was, it's, a, it's, 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 a, it's this group of people who are going to pull off the biggest heist in the history of Spain. And, um, but inside of this construct you have these folks who are very different, very flawed, very human, and they're learning how to care for each other and love one another while they're doing this. They become a sort of family, which is wonderful. Um, also, I watched Love Island. Um, and <laughs> <laughs> so there's that. Uh, and, um, um, what else? There's so many. Oh, um, um, Altered Carbon as well. I've been to that as well. And that was phenomenal. Uh, yeah, I have watched a lot of TV and I have a lot to get through as well. I need to see Killing Eve. I need to catch up. Killing Eve, I love very much. Um, but I, I'm a couple episodes behind. Yeah. You know what I'm going to do is I'm going to get that book and after every chapter, I'm going to watch an episode of Cheers just so I can get my balance because I need, you know, I, I didn't mean to discourage anyone by saying like it's difficult. Because difficult stuff can also be important and entertaining even, but I just need a balance right now. So. No, absolutely. I, I hear you. As I just said, I also watch Love Island. So, like, <laughs> so, I mean, we have to, I think that right now, what I'm finding, at least in this time for me, is that I have to prioritize the things that bring me joy. And I have to create time to celebrate and actively seek those things. And a lot of times, at least for me, I find that my creativity is attached to uh, capitalism in a way. Like, I, can't, I don't feel like I can be creative unless I'm getting paid for it. And it feels, and, and that's, such a, that's such a warped way of viewing the thing that I love. So one thing that I've also been doing is like watching TV or watching movies and, or dancing when I want to because it feels good or doing a yoga practice because it feels good. And um, that's been really enriching for me in this time. So there's no word yet on season two, although this comes out next week, so maybe by that time we'll have word? I, well, by that time, hopefully we'll have word and we'll be, we'll be celebrating as this comes out. Um, but as of right now, no word. I think that there's a lot of, I mean, there's a lot in flux. Um, but from what I have heard, the network loves the show, everyone loves the show. Um, everyone feels the way that we feel, that it's, it's a show that speaks to a need. Um, it is a, that bomb that we need. And the fact that we are in this quarantine around the globe, really, you know, we need, well, one, we need content. And two, it's wonderful to have content that's healing in some ways. Mm -hmm. And I know, um, obviously, you were on you were on Luke Cage, so you have experience with fandoms. But I do feel like the Zoe fandom is is very specific. They're very intelligent. Um, they feel really connected to the show. I mean, I just see it from talking about it. I can't imagine what it's like being on it. You probably not right now because we're in lockdown. But do people want to come up and talk to you about the show and, and express how they feel about it? Absolutely. I more than any show that I've ever been a part of, people are reaching out and they're reaching out in a specific way. They're reaching out from the heart space. They're reaching out from this space that is, um, there's this gratitude and this thanks for telling the truth about a situation um, that they haven't seen before reflected in that way and it gives them something in there. So there's this really authentic and vulnerable way that people are, are, are addressing me. Um, and, and that is, that's a huge gift. Um, I had no idea that the fandom, I, it's even weird to say fandom, like I don't even, it, it's odd. But I, I like to think of those folks who are invested in the journey of Zoe's um, as people that are just a part of our family, you know, and, and they see the characters in Zoe and they see members of their family and some of them have experienced like 
tragic losses. Some of them are making their way to the workplace. Some of them are navigating love and trying to figure out what they want. Um, but everybody is connected to this idea of music being a balm, healing, and uh, a very, um, a way of connecting with one another, which is really awesome. It's such a great show. You're so great on it. I so appreciate you taking the time to talk to me today. Of course. Come on now. Like what? Like, yeah. And I love your blouse, by the way. Oh, it's a uh, pajamas. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> yeah! I told you I was going to wear pajamas. You did. I'm not you kidding. Yeah. I was the whole That's time, I was like, those are dope. Those, I was the whole time, I was like, those are so cool.